Hey guys, so this video is going to cover the second part of 9-6 where we're going to talk about the quadratic formula and the discriminant. In the previous video, we talked about just the quadratic formula. And in this video, we are going to talk about the other part of this, the discriminant. So here's the quadratic formula again. And the part of it that's called the discriminant is the part that's under the radical sign, b squared minus 4ac. Oh, and by the way, uh, the square root sign is also called the radical sign. Talked about this in class, and some people did not know that the word radical meant uh, the square root sign. So you will hear me say the word radical sign very often, and I am just referring to the square root sign, guys. But okay, here's what the discriminant does. It is basically going to indicate to you how many solutions your quadratic function is going to have. When you compute it, the result is either going to be a positive number, a negative number, or zero. And each one of those situations is going to tell you how many solutions you will expect in your final answer. But let's look at some examples, and I think that will give you the main idea. So uh, just to quickly review some of the ideas from chapter 9, when you have a function that looks like this, f of x equals x squared plus x minus 2, in order to solve this solution, you would have to first factor it. And you would factor it into x plus 2 times x minus 1. Again, in 8-6, we go over how to factor a trinomial like that. Uh, when you figure out your solutions, from the previous video, 9-4, we learned about setting the function equal to 0. So you're basically taking your x plus 2 and you are setting that equal to 0. And if you subtract 2 from both sides, then you would get a final answer of negative 2. And then the x minus 1, you also have to set that equal to 0. And if you add 1 to both sides, then you will get a final answer of x equals positive 1. Now, if you look at the x-axis on our coordinate plane, negative 2 would fall right there, and positive 1 would be right there. Our parabola, we know, will be facing upward, but what we don't know is just the axis of symmetry in the vertex, because we haven't calculated them yet. You would need to use the negative b over 2a formula to get the axis of symmetry and the vertex. But in any case, uh, this is just a review of the previous stuff from chapter 9. The main idea here is we have two solutions, negative 2 and 1. The parabola is crossing the x-axis twice, and it's crossing the x-axis twice because of the discriminant. So let's look at what the discriminant is. You have to go back and establish what a, b, and c are. a is 1, b is 1, and c is negative 2. b squared is 1 squared, and then minus 4. There's always a minus 4 there. a is 1, and c is negative 2. The square root sign gets brought down, so we have the radical of 1 squared, which is 1, minus 4 times negative 2. That's going to be positive 8. And then 1 plus 8 is 9. Since 9 is a positive number, we would square root it to get plus or minus 3. And right here, we are getting what the discriminant does for us. It is indicating, confirming, that we are going to have two solutions. And again, that's because the 9 is positive. Since the 9 was positive, we were able to square root it to get plus or minus 3. And I'll just do it on this example, but if you go back and plug the entire quadratic formula in, here's what it would look like. Negative b is going to, uh, is going to be negative 1, and then plus or minus the square root of b squared. Oh, I'm just going to stop right there because we just calculated that. The square root of b squared minus 4ac, we just calculated that to be 3. And all of that goes over 2 times a. And that would be uh, 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, when you take negative 1 and you first add 3 to it, you're going to have positive 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. That is one of our solutions. Remember, the quadratic formula tells you what your solutions are for x when you finish solving the quadratic formula. And we already got 1 as our answer from, uh, from up here. But I'm just kind of showing you this to uh, describe the main idea. Uh, when you take negative, uh, negative 1 plus or minus 3 and you do the uh, minus 3 part, 
So uh, negative 1 minus 3, that would be negative 4. And you divide that by 2, well, that's going to equal negative 2, which is the other solution that we got for our parabola. So again, the discriminant is not telling you what your solutions are. It's just telling you how many solutions you should expect. And you would expect those, you would expect to have two solutions because again, the 9 was positive. So we were able to add or subtract 3. When I say the word or, I'm separating two things that you do. You are adding 3 to get one solution. You are subtracting 3 to get the other solution. But let's look at the other examples, and that'll hopefully tighten the rest of it up for you. Here's another coordinate plane. And in this example, our quadratic function is going to be a perfect square trinomial. Uh, remember, 4 is a perfect square, and 1 is also a perfect square. So whenever you have a perfect square trinomial, you know that your answer will be the same binomial twice. If uh, that was something you don't totally remember, it's coming from section 8-7. So that would be the video you'd want to go back and watch again. x plus 2 <clears throat> times x plus 2 is x plus 2 squared. And again, we are trying to figure out the solutions to this function, so we have to set it equal to 0. Well, the only value for x that is going to make this function become 0 would be if x is negative 2. And then negative 2 plus 2 would be 0, and 0 squared would still be 0. So x is going to equal negative 2 for our solution. And that means the parabola is only going to touch the x-axis at negative 2. It's going to open upward because the value of a is positive 1. And we only have one solution because it's only touching the x-axis once. But let's look at how the discriminant is going to confirm this for us. Again, a is 1, b is 4, c is 4. b squared would be uh, 4 squared, minus 4, and then times a, which is 1, and then times c, which is 4. 4 squared is 16, and negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. Negative 16 minus 16 is going to be 0. So you could square root 0, but there's no such thing as plus or minus 0. There's only 0. So uh, that's why there's only going to be one solution. If I were to use the quadratic formula, we would have negative 4 plus or minus 0 over 2 times 1, which is just 2. But again, plus or minus 0, that doesn't change anything. You're only going to be doing negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. And surprise, surprise, that is your answer right over here. But we didn't have to go that far. The, uh, the discriminant being 0 is just telling us that there is going to be one solution. All right, one more example to look at. Here's another coordinate plane. And this time, we have a, uh, a, a function that is uh, not going to cross the x-axis. If you were to go ahead and make a t-table and plug in x and y values for this function, you would find that it doesn't have any value for y that becomes 0. Or, and, and yeah, y does not become 0 in, in this at all. Uh, so basically, since it's not going to be crossing the x-axis, you already know that there will not be a solution. There is no solution to this. Uh, but let's just look at the discriminant and see how that confirms. For the third and final time, a is 1, b is negative 3, and c is positive 3. b squared is going to be negative 3 to the second power. There's always a minus 4. a is 1, c is 3. Negative 3 squared, that's positive 9. And negative 4 times positive 3 is negative 12. Here's the important part. 9 minus 12 is negative 3. So you are taking the square root of negative 3, which is impossible. You cannot square root a negative number. You are welcome to try it on your calculator, and your calculator will say error. The basic reason for why that is true is when you square root something, uh, it is supposed to be the same number multiplying itself twice. So 5 times 5 is 25. There is no way to make a negative 25 with doing a negative 5 times negative 5, that wouldn't work because a negative times a negative is a positive. And then uh, 5 times 5 is still 25. The only way that you would get a negative number is if you multiply a positive number and a negative number. 
which uh, basically violates the whole point of a square root because it's supposed to be the same number times itself. But in any case, uh, that's you know you can just remember that if you have a negative answer, then uh, then you know there's going to be no solution. No real solution, that is. Eventually, you will learn about imaginary solutions. That will happen at the end of the year. All right, so here's a summary of what we've been doing. Uh, basically, the discriminant, again, it's going to be an indicator as to how many solutions your quadratic function is going to have. It's not telling you what the solutions are. It's just telling you how many you're going to get. So if uh, b squared minus 4ac is positive, well, then you know you're going to get two solutions. If b squared minus 4ac is negative, well, then you're not going to have any solution. There's no real solution because you can't square root a negative sign. And then lastly, if uh, the discriminant is exactly 0, well, then you are going to have exactly one solution. And if you need to pause this slide to write all of that down, please do so because the next slide is going to have some practice problems. All right, so here's six practice problems that you should pause the video and do. Uh, if you want to wait one moment, I'm going to do number 32, and then you uh, can go back and do the rest. And then the slide that has the answers is the next one that's coming. So in 32, uh, let's just do this one really quickly. A is 1. B is 0. There is no BX term. There's no middle term here. So that means B had to have been 0 to make the X go away. And that makes C negative 15. Our question is just asking us, uh, find the number of solutions, not what the solutions are, how many solutions are we going to get. So we now have A, B, and C, so let's look at the discriminant. B squared would be 0 squared, and then minus 4 times A, which is 1, times C, which is negative 15. 0 squared is 0, and negative 4 times negative 15 is positive 60. So, because 60 is a positive number, well, we already know that we're going to get two solutions. And that's it. You're done with the problem. 60 is positive. You know you're going to have two solutions. I'll prove to you why there are two solutions right now. If you use the quadratic formula, you would have negative b, which is negative 0, plus or minus the square root of the discriminant, which we just got to be 60, all over 2 times a. And a was 1. The square root of 60 is going to be some decimal number. It's going to be positive. That's all that really matters. The square root of 60 is going to be some positive number. Let's just say it is 7 point, I don't know, 4. It's making it up. I should have looked it up before making the video, but whatever. Negative 0 plus 7.4 divided by 2. Well, that's going to be some number. And then 0 minus 7.4, well, that would be negative 7.4 over 2. And basically, when you divide both of those by 2, you're going to get two different numbers. That's why you have two solutions. Again, the square root of 60 is probably not 7.4. I'm just making that up on the spot to prove the point. So uh, that was one example done for you. I'm going to leave the rest to you, so go ahead and pause the video and hit resume whenever you are ready to see the solutions. All right, there you go, guys. Uh, so uh, 29, 31, they both say 0, meaning there was no solution. And then uh, 30, 32, and 33 all had two solutions, and 34 only had one solution. So ask questions in class if you need to, guys. I uh, hope you learned what you need to learn from Chapter 9, because we are now going to be moving on to Chapter 10. So I will leave you with the Parabola Chef. See you guys later.